wild success. This thing is gonna be absolutely terrifyingly fast to drive. Yeah, that's the stupidest thing I've ever built. I think we can call that motor officially mounted. Yeah. Got three solid motor mounts, which is the same number it had in the snowmobile, so should be uh, should be good there. Yeah. Nice and solid. Has just a little bit of flex, which it should. In this episode, the mountain scooter is going from what you see here to a fully trellised potentially running machine. That's the goal. First, I gotta make 12 of these things. This trellis is gonna make it stupid strong and look awesome, like a Ducati. Boom, boom. You already got this looking really good, the attachment point here. Yeah, that's what I worked on first. I cleaned up all of that, covered up this hole where I had to chop pieces off, covered up that hole, you just, you know, covered it all up, looking and making it, made it look a little better. And stronger, but it was already strong enough. <laughs> So I set out to make it strong um, enough for a scooter, and I think I ended up making it strong enough for a house. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's what overkill is for. So the exhaust goes something like that, and then the clutch system will go about there. So the shaft will end up being up above the carburetors. Mm -hmm. Today is figure out drivetrain day. Yeah, well, today's the start of it anyway. It might take a, <laughs> a while. I mean, I have a, the concepts all there. It's just making the pieces work. I may have to get some stuff machine custom or get really creative.
I had a bunch of shenanigans to get this all to work. Um, I had to shorten the shaft by about four inches and figure out how to fit both a carrier bearing and um, a sprocket on it. The sprocket, we're going with this one inch keyed sprocket, um, which we'll also be able to use the old Barbie car uh, axle for the lower axle. And it'll fit perfectly on that end there. I just have to cut a keyway into it. And to make all this happen, to weld this back together, I used a short chunk of an extra uh, socket or extension that fit perfectly inside of this shaft. Oh, so it's perfectly straight. Yeah, so, it was, <laughs> so it's perfectly straight in the middle there where I welded it and then I spun it. I had this bearing bolted on already and I spun it while I welded it so I could just do a constant weld and start, you know, in a, ta in a tapered a V notch like that. Start at the bottom with a small weld and then work my way out. <laughs> and then I had to grind it down to fit the inside of this carrier bearing. So I made myself another North Idaho lathe, <laughs> which obviously this bearing wasn't here and it was just the one, so that's not enough. So I took this bolt, stuck it inside there, bolted this little bracket to there to make a very rudimentary bearing. <laughs> and then, I sat here on this tire with the drill. And then used the grinder on it to grind it down. Well, it looks super straight. Yeah, it wobbles a little bit, but yeah, interestingly, a little bit. that's actually less than it did to start with. It was bent. It was bent <laughs> when I started it with it, and that's less wobble than it had. And the cool thing is because I ground it right there, for the carrier bearing, where it goes through the bearing, it's perfectly straight. It doesn't wobble inside the bearing at all. Oh, it wobbles, before it wobbles and at the after. end and like right in here, but it doesn't put any wobble, too much wobble on the bearings. But it was bent before, so yeah. it can't be too much of a problem. Right now, I'm working on figuring out the um, air intakes because that's a problem. Um, and I want to make sure I figure it out before I get too far into the build in case I have to actually just relocate the motor a little bit. Um, I can get those, these are pretty heavy duty silicone boots left over from the front mount intercooler install in my car. Um, and that that kind of works right there. And I kind of smashed down this little piece of aluminum to see if this would, you know, I can get that there. Um, and then elbow it out or up or wherever. But the problem is they're gonna rub pretty yeah. strongly on the shock. Granted, the shock isn't very abrasive, but, um, could you maybe put a cylinder over the shock? Yeah, actually that's not a bad idea. getting somewhere yeah the brakes um, are mostly there um, this is the extra caliper off the Barbie car so that's cool free parts um, and this brake rotor uh, is original to this shaft for the snowmobile um, it's even in the same spot with its keyway and everything so that all worked out when I shortened the shaft um, that sprocket I still need to cut a keyway into the shaft here uh, and I have this spare parts laying around you wouldn't believe how many spare parts I have around here <laughs> it amazes me anyway um, I think this is supposed to be a clutch master cylinder but we'll find out if it's gonna work for a brake master cylinder then all we need is a brake line and rear brake should be done it's really cool for a lot of reasons but at the moment the coolest thing about it is that so far the total investment is about 50 bucks. Obviously all the other parts I paid for at some point, but they've just been sitting around for so many years that you know you can't really count it as cost on this build. Bend is one of the coolest 
thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Once you get to 90 degrees with the tubing bender, you gotta lock this in here and reset the ram for another 90. Yep. It's pretty dope. in fact pull the engine out. Now that it's done, I had to take both the engine the front motor mounts off of the engine to get it out. But there we go. Yeah. And it's sexy. Yeah. <laughs> the drivetrain looks awesome without the engine. It does, yeah. Oh hey, yeah now I can get a really good shot of so you guys can see what's going on here. You wanna give it a spin for me Ethan? So that's what's happening on the inside there. So Mr. Parts Snowmobile that we're getting some of this stuff from uh, right here. About to lose some more parts. <laughs> so what happened to this thing? Did you buy it as a part snowmobile or? Yeah. Um, I bought it for 250 bucks and it actually did run. Um, at first the problem turned out to be a B in the fuel line. Like legitimately this fuel line, an entire B was inside of it. <laughs> what? I think it's official that this snowmobile has given up its soul and heart to become something greater. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled the entire wiring harness out of it and the engine um, because the wiring harness on the other snowmobile doesn't have electric start. This one, the engine had electric start, so I figured what the heck, might as well be luxury. Uh, it's got really sweet grip heaters or heated grips. I'm gonna steal those. I'm gonna just steal everything off of it because it was a pretty sad snowmobile, but it's gonna be an amazing scooter mountain snow bike thing. So we've got the uh, oil tank from one of the snowmobiles and the parts of snowmobiles here with a little bit of oil still in it. success. This thing is going to be absolutely terrifyingly fast to drive. Yeah, it's going to scare the pants off of everyone. <laughs> oh. Or maybe burn the pants off with the exhaust. We'll work on that. Oh man. Yeah, that's the stupidest thing I've ever built. <laughs> oh man. Shoot. Wow. <laughs>
<laughs> sounds pretty good. Yeah, sounds like a snowmobile. <laughs> <laughs> Smokes like a snowmobile too. Yeah. So what are the next steps here? Uh, lots and lots of work. <laughs> All the really big things are done. We still have to do the wiring harness because right now it's just an absolute mess. So I need to strip out anything I don't need. Probably the biggest thing is gonna be a decent fuel tank. So in the next episode, we're gonna be driving this thing. Yeah. Next episode will go from a running thing on some stands in the shop to me probably almost dying again. <laughs> to switch Brodies with Moab. <laughs>which is more frightening, jumping out there or jumping back? Jumping back, definitely. That's the van life right there. Mm -hmm. Ethan does it gourmet. so you can drive to the trailhead. Like we're actually, we've actually driven down the trail at this point. But I want oh, ho, ho. This that's a good, up. good. Oh yeah. You guys that's really cool. did find the good spot. That's that swagger. This is so comfortable. <laughs> All right. <laughs> On the fun way down, we're not doing that repel. Yeah, this is the chimney session. Sick shot.
this is getting pretty rowdy, huh? I got so much sand <laughs> everywhere. We are going down that. 90 feet, anchored to that tree. And, uh, it's windy as... Well, some weather came in, so we can't climb today. We did a little too much electronical activity last night. So we're gonna jumpstart this bad boy and uh, it's gonna be heavy and possibly quite humorous. You know what? Maybe we found a stick last time and we did stick clip it somehow. So then yeah. we'll put the rope here. Yep. This is Fence post away. I tell you what, they're cleaning into pussies. I just aided myself up that with some uh, not so real aid gear. <laughs> 